increased market risk, it would lower growth opportunities for the companies and network investment, and more importantly, in the current environment, it would limit the opportunity and the incentive and the thrust to create jobs. Conclusion four, net neutrality regulation will shift risk, returns, growth, and business opportunity away from core network providers in favor of edge applications and content providers. Now, there may be reasons for doing this. You've heard about net neutrality and open networks and end-to-end -end principles and so forth and so forth. I don't want to dispute those because in substantial measure they're unexceptional because I can't measure them. I don't know when, what they are. Okay? To me, they're kind of a vague apparition that sort of comes and goes that covers up a lot of very, very substantive things. We're talking about jobs here. What I think and the Commission has asked for reliable data, reliable analysis, and that's what we're trying to help provide. The result of shifting risk and returns will reduce aggregate investment, network infrastructure, citizen access to broadband, and undermine job, network job creation. And very quick conclusion, the proposals being considered by the Commission, some of them least, conflict in important ways with consensus requirements of national broadband policy, and they undermine our macroeconomic policy goals, made clear by the President last night, to stimulate the investment and in getting Americans back to work. Uh, I said I'd take about 20 minutes, and that's about what it took me, and uh, now then, uh, let's talk. You have any questions? I hope so. Sir. Did, uh, when I didn't hear, but I have on other occasions. And uh, if I understand your question, I mean, in the, among firms in the Internet Value Cluster, content providers and application providers already do tier pricing. Okay? I mean, if, if, you, if you buy software, there are different versions of software. If you buy applications, there are different versions of applications. And in fact, the author of, of the Google tiered pricing model uh, is a fellow named Hal Berry, who is a professor at, uh, in California. And he's come up with a very ingenious model that, that, that other people would like to use. We have, on the other hand, the, the proposal here would be, and it's not clear, initially, it looked like the commission was going to sort of have one size fits all and only all you can eat kinds of pricing schemes for the network operators. But there is a line in the, uh, uh, the notice of proposed rulemaking that says we think it'll be all right if they differentiate among different classes of users. They also say we think it will be all right for the firms to do what is called reasonable network management. But you know, the devil here is in the details. Okay? There are enormous uh, political pressures to keep folks from doing that. I would argue, in specific response to your question, that permitting the companies, the cable companies and the telcos to do this, to adopt this particular business model, would generate cash flow revenue. But more importantly, my main job is to evaluate consumer welfare, and it would increase consumer welfare. So on that basis, I, we're urging the Commission to do it. Is the Commission going to do it? We're not sure what the Commission will do. Thank you for your question. Thank you. Sir. I want to talk about the application layer of net neutrality implications. So let's say I'm a corporation and a bank, right? And I have a piece of proprietary software to ensure uh, that there is you know, reasonable network management, privacy protection principles on my end of the network, right? My customer is we use Bank of America. They're a Bank of America customer. And then in between the two of them is the actual network, right? The infrastructure. Um, to what extent do you see business implications for corporations that use large packet data delivery systems over the network that would be controlled, may or may not be controlled, is the way that I want to phrase it, under a non-network neutrality universe, right? So what's the implication of the business not knowing what the management principles are in the network, not being able to gauge what service provider a customer is using? Let me give you sort of three pieces of a response. <coughs> I think I understand what you're doing, but let's back up and, and talk about the, the absolute worst case. Mm -hmm. Somehow or another, the network operator can make money by discriminating in favor of the, the good guys, right. okay, and against the bad guys. Okay, we already.
might have laws against that. That's called, that's called predatory pricing, that's called exclusionary conduct, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we would normally take that to the Federal Tr Trade Commission or to the antitrust authorities. Uh, and also, the Commission has an enormous amount of authority, you know, to, un under existing law, without any network neutrality regulations or anything. The Commission already has a significant amount of authority to do that. Well, I would argue <coughs> that in the current market, you mentioned banks, yeah. and so that would be in New York City, let's say, where all the Federal Reserve, you know, the major cities throughout the United States. There's a fair amount of competition among network operators in those cities. Now, if we were talking about Albany Nobby Township in Indiana, and the cable provider there, the telco provider, there's some market power, because it's not built out yet. But I would argue that, that there is a significant amount of competition among cable operators, among telco operators, and more importantly, if, if the commission soon puts more spectrum into the wireless space, there's going to be more competition for these kinds of, of transfers on, in the wireless space. So I would say, you know, that, 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 might, be, that might be a problem, okay? But I, I, I just don't see it. I don't see it as a big problem because these, uh, uh, I've been a business consultant for a large part of my career, and uh, if, if Comcast came to me, or, uh, uh, or Verizon, or Time Warner, or somebody else came to me and said, you know, what is the impact on shareholder value of our, our doing this? I would write them a long paper that could be included in two words. That's dumb. That does not create value for shareholders. And if you want to give me a couple hours, I'll tell you why. <laughs> yeah, just, just to add one thing, too, about network management. If you, if you look 